All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Steve Yip. I'm with the October 22nd Coalition, Stop Police Brutality, Repression, and the Criminalization of a Generation here in New York City. I'm also a member of the national uh, body that's been revitalizing October 22nd. I'm also a supporter of the Revolutionary Commerce Party. So I'm going to read a statement by Carl Dix, who is the co founder of the October 22nd Coalition to Stop Police Brutality. And spokesperson for the Revolutionary Commons Party. All right, here we go. We started October 22 because people were killing hundreds, the police, the police was killing hundreds of people every year. Cops killed unarmed people, they claimed, who had cell phones, wallets, or cigarette lighters that were guns. And almost none of these murdering pigs ever got punished for their crime. You got a call. The victims of this white supremacist terror were mostly young, black or brown. And it didn't matter whether the mayors presiding over this assault of genocidal proportions were Democrats or Republicans. This nationwide epidemic of murder by police continued unabated. Over the years, October 22 provided a platform for families whose lives have been devastated by brutal murdering cops to speak the truth about what was being done to them. In October 22, rallied diverse groups of people, like we see here today, to come out in support of them and have their backs. So we got to be for real. The nationwide epidemic of police murder still continues down today. Cops continue to kill hundreds of people every year and still almost never get punished. Does this mean that protest makes no difference? Not at all. It is necessary to stand up and fight back because Without this resistance, this system would beat us down so far that we would never rise up and do anything about all the shit they bring down on us. But resistance by itself would not end the horror of police terror, mass incarceration, and other forms of repression this system enforces on black and brown people. That's because this repression is built into the fabric of this capitalist imperialist system we live under. As the revolutionary leader Bob Avakian has said, the role of the police is not to protect and serve the people. It is to protect and serve the system that rules over the people. This isn't something you can end by voting for Democrats or trying to get elected officials to defund the police. Almost done. This racial oppression can be ended, but not under this system. It can be ended through an actual revolution that mobilizes millions of people to rise up and meet and defeat the institutions of violence oppression of this system. One that goes on to build a totally different and far better system in place of this fucked up one. This kind of revolution is not only needed, it's possible. We have the leadership for it in Bobovakian. The leader has developed a strategy for making revolution right here in the belly of the imperialist beast with a vision of the kind of world revolution can bring into being. And now it is a rare time when revolution becomes more possible. The beautiful uprising in response to the murder of George Floyd points to the possibility of rallying millions of people to take to the streets in opposition to the system's horror. And today, the fierce infighting going on among the ruling class and the intense division throughout society. This, this system becoming more vulnerable. So let me run to, so let me end by urging you to learn more about this revolution, which you can do by watching the Revolution Nothing Less show on YouTube every week and going to the website revcom.us. And if you really want to end police terror and all the horrors of this system, get with this revolution. That's by Carl Dix of the Revolutionary Communist Party and co-founder of the October 22nd National Day of Protest in South Lake County.